Elon Musk does not decide to hide his space exploration dreams in any way. He established SpaceX as the first stop on his journey to Mars. Musk wants to make Mars an Earth-like colony, and there is nothing that can stop him. Well, except Mars itself. Musk has made several controversial statements that have made people think of him as out of his mind. His work ethic is unquestionable, so that could be why he makes these announcements of seemingly impossible things. However, when he mentioned in August 2020 that the best way to take Mars over would be to nuke it, almost everyone reacted to him in shock, disbelief, and grudging awe. Is this an idea that holds water though? Watch this video to the end to get an idea as to why Musk would have that kind of thinking. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and like the video too. Mars is not in any way like Earth. The planet is currently not fit for humans as its atmosphere is very thin and its climate is positively frigid. This is one of the reasons why Jeff Bezos is against the idea of living on Mars. He's been quoted as saying that if one wants to live on Mars, they should try surviving on Mount Everest for a while. This is why Musk has had to explain his plan to make the red planet hospitable to humans and make us understand what his plan for terraforming would cost. Musk's big plans lie in nuclear weapons. He wants us to detonate nuclear devices on Mars' poles, vaporizing its ice caps, releasing a colossal amount of water vapor and CO2 into the Martian atmosphere. This would cause a runaway greenhouse effect. As the temperature rises due to the greenhouse gases released by the explosions, the Martian rocks will heat up and outgas more CO2, which heats up the planet more, releasing more CO2, and so on. The effect of this would be Mars having Earth-like temperatures, a thicker atmosphere, and actual liquid water. The introduction of vegetation would keep the oxygen levels on a positive high, and then we could see the rise of the Martian colony. Like any plan, there are advantages and flaws, and it almost looks like the flaws of this plan are greater than the pros. Thankfully, Mars has close similarities to Earth, so this would make the terraformation much easier. Easier is always welcome because of how difficult it already is. One of the greatest advantages we already have with Mars is its proximity to Earth. It also makes it seem to have polar ice caps and a similar atmospheric compounds and similar elements like oxygen and CO2. It helps that it isn't a gas giant planet and we can have things stand firm on it while its rotation rate and tilt will help too. A day, referred to as a sol on Mars, takes around 24 hours and 37 minutes, which is just a little bit over Earth's rate. And the planet's 24 degree tilt compares nicely to Earth's 23.5 degree tilt. This tilt similarity shows that both planets are on a very similar schedule for seasonal changes. The amount of work that we're going to change in the atmosphere is, however, the bulk of the problem. The atmosphere on Mars is below 1% as thick as Earth's, and has only 0.2% of its oxygen, and 95.3% is carbon dioxide. Scientists say that Earth was at some point like this too, so terraforming Mars would only be humanly doing what nature does. Before Elon Musk's idea to nuke the planet, there have been other suggestions on what to do to Mars. One of them is introducing a large orbital mirror that are hundreds of miles long and flying them to Mars. While this is going to be a practical hazard to undertake, it is theoretically possible. A few hundred thousand miles away from the planet, the 20,000 ton mirrors will be situated and used as reflectors of solar radiation onto the surface. While they will be able to raise the surface temperature by a few degrees when at random in space, they would be more practical when working with Mars's polar caps. The heat reflected and the mirrors would melt the ice caps at the polar caps, and as the temperature rises at the polar caps, greenhouse gases would be emitted. The effect? Global warming. The second suggested plan is to introduce pollution to the atmosphere. Building a solar-powered greenhouse producing factory on the planet would take almost all the same work capacity as moving mirrors that weigh thousands of tons. This would be a more straightforward way to release those greenhouse gases that would heat and thicken the atmosphere. This would convert carbon dioxide to oxygen too, making it human friendly. Our pollution rates on Earth are skyrocketing, so transferring some of that to Mars would definitely make it worthwhile. That would also leave us needing breathing devices for years after the process, because this would leave us needing breathing devices for years after the process begins, but we would reduce the demand for pressurized suits. The asteroid method is another suggestion that may be on the same crazy level as nuking Mars. The plan here is to launch asteroids at the planet's surface. This would not involve any construction of factories, just attaching a high-speed rocket to a random asteroid and setting it on a path to Mars. 
we would need to use nuclear thermal rocket engines to move any 10 billion ton asteroid at 4 kilometers per second to Mars, and that would need about 10 years to accomplish. The impact of the collision should set free 130 million megawatts of power, and that much power can run the planet for 10 years. The effect will be a 3 degrees Celsius increase in temperature across the planet and the production of 1 trillion tons of water by melting. We would only need two handfuls of asteroids to bring the Martian water to 25% of the surface and bring the temperature to a human-friendly point. This plan has a flaw though, and it would take 50 years after starting to make any real progress, and Mars will be left unavailable and unviable for many years after that. This would also lead to the extermination of Martian natural life, our best shot at figuring out extraterrestrial inhabitation. However, all of these plans seem moot as NASA has announced that we do not have the technology for any of them to work. Human evolution, especially in technology, has been swift, though, so we can wait and see. Now let's take a look more closely at Elon Musk's plan. Elon's plan to nuke Mars might sound crazy, but would lead to a hastened timeline. Musk has also subtly dropped hints about this since 2015 on an appearance of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, and is still tweeting about it in recent times. He initially just tweeted, Nuke Mars, and then followed up with a t-shirt soon. Other tweets followed to explain these and explain what he meant. Nuke Mars refers to a continuous stream of very low fallout nuclear fusion explosions above the atmosphere to create artificial suns, much like our sun this would not cause Mars to become radioactive. Well, as he said, we would have fuller control over those nuclear bombs, so we could detonate them before they hit the surface of Mars. This would keep the life there a little safer than the asteroid method would. As the bombs would be detonated over the planet's ice caps, the ice would melt from the heat of the artificial sun and then produce water and surface heat. The biggest drawback of this plan would lay in the startling amount of nuclear explosions it would require. A Russian space agency, Roscosmos has estimated that the plan would need over 10,000 missiles to be successful. Across the world, there's a total of 14,000 nuclear warheads already produced, and this is coming down from the 70,000 that were available during the 80s. We obviously are capable of producing more warheads for this purpose, but it would be very costly and resource consuming. Musk, however, sees it as no problem, as evidenced by his tweet where he said exactly that. Another flaw with the nuke implant is a risk of a nuclear winter. While Musk may say that the warheads do not need to be detonated on the surface of the planet, it would still make dirt and debris get stirred up on the atmosphere. Mars is known for high-speed winds, and this will most likely keep all this debris trapped in the atmosphere. And that would, for years, block out the heat of even the artificial suns and the blasts they aim to create. This would inevitably cause temperatures on the planet to drop, the exact opposite of what the explosions are intended for. Again, while Musk is certain that there will be no radiation risk, there actually will most likely be. Mars has nothing protecting it, like the ozone layer, so it is laid bare to the sun's radiation. It may be cold, but it has UV and cosmic radiation that rank higher than the Earth's surface. That said, a nuclear explosion would send the levels of radiation through the roof, and that would be catastrophic. The fallout would poison the whole planet, from air to water to soil, and that would make it harmful to indigent life and subsequent human habitation. Analysts also say that terraforming Mars is not a long-term solution, as it would not be habitable for long. The reason why is really the reason it is inhabitable at the moment. Its lack of magnetosphere and its low gravity allows the radiation from the sun to strip away the atmosphere really quickly. There really is no protection from solar factors. The entire terraforming process hangs on the fact that mass be converted to energy. However, the carbon dioxide in the poles of the planet is not enough to make the necessary changes in the climate. Water vapor will condense quickly and evaporate even faster and inhibit further development of oceans. No ocean means no rain, which means no trees, and that translates to no oxygen. Terraforming will take more than just a few big bangs. We would need to reduce the toxicity in the atmosphere, introduce oxygen, increase the volume of H2O, reduce the toxicity of the soil, reduce levels of cosmic radiation, and stop the new denser atmosphere from being blown away by solar winds. Do we have what it takes? Elon Musk certainly thinks that we do, and he's got some very interesting marketing strategies, so for all we know this could be another PR stunt to keep eyes on his company. Let us know what you think about the Mars colonization process, and if it's worth all the stress. Thanks for watching another one of our videos. While you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these videos on your screen.